This episode is proudly supported by Westholm Australian Wagyu. Whether you're a chef or just love going to restaurants, you know the best ingredients are everything, especially when it comes to beef. Westholm, based in Queensland and the Northern Territory, Australia, is working with the land to create nature-led Australian Wagyu. They steward 16 million acres of rangeland, guided by the natural ecosystem where cattle graze and forage on native grasses for the first few years of their lives. The result is high quality Wagyu beef that reflects the terroir of Northern Australia. Westholm believe that when nature leads, flavour follows. Learn more at westholm.com. The food industry is a great industry to be in. It's really rewarding and um, it's, um, yeah, to, to be in a family business is fantastic as well. So if people have got the desire to do it, it it's, it's, it's great um, and all the hard work pays off in the end. <laughs> this is The Producers. I'm Danny Vallant. Brendan Gamsey is part of Gamsey Smokehouse, a family-run small goods company in northeast Victoria. Building on his father Felix's work as a butcher, Gamsey turns free-range whole beasts into small-batch, chemical-free smoked products, working with local farmers, distributors and retailers near and far to build an ethical business they can stand behind with pride. So my name's Brendan Gamsey. I'm from Gamsey Smokehouse. We're a family-owned and operated small goods manufacturing business in northeast Victoria. And we make ham, bacon and other small goods um, from free range uh, and without using any chemical ingredients. All our stuff's true artisan. We make it all by hand in small batches and have been doing so for many years. So we're in Wangaratta and we've been in Wangaratta for our whole existence. So my father Felix started his first butcher shop just down the road from where our manufacturing facility is now um, in 1986 and currently we work out of a purpose-built uh, manufacturing facility that um, we have uh, eight employees and we work Monday to Friday and we 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 do a lot of um, work for the amount of employees we have and we've got a great team um, and yeah, we're really lucky being in the region we are and being a family business and, and having a great group of employees as well. Felix Gamsey arrived from Slovenia as a small boy, learnt English at school and inherited a fierce commitment to hard work from his parents. That story of the, the European immigrant coming over to Australia with, with nothing and just working, working so hard to, to achieve something and, and provide for his family. So um, him and his um, family came over here from Slovenia when he was, he was quite young um, and they settled in Wangaratta because there was a textiles mill here and uh, his mother and, and father got jobs there and dad was, was going to school there and he, he didn't learn to speak English until, you know, he was six or seven or eight from school, but then they didn't speak it at home. So he was, yeah, he, he was a really hard worker and it was that typical story of finishing school early. So he, he finished going to high school when he was 15 and, and started um, started a butchering apprenticeship and and just worked really hard and being going home and, you know, eating different things than his friends were eating and his, his mother cooking different things to what his, his mates were from school were eating, I guess gave him that, um, you know, the ability to think outside the square a little bit and have different influences, the Eastern European influences that, um, that he had at home. He was, yeah, he was always wanting to do something different. There was, there was uh, quite a few um, retail butcher shops in Wangaratta for the size of the town and I, I guess he was always trying to, to do something different to, to attract more customers as people do these days. Uh, and, you know, being in a country town um, back in the, you know, the, the 80s and, and 90s when he, was, when he was running his businesses, 
you know, it, it was you went to the local butcher to buy your meat and then you went to the to the greengrocer to buy your fruit and veg and you bought your other stuff from the supermarket and then it turned a lot to buying everything at the supermarket. So the challenge was to to get customers still to come in and, and, and buy their meat at the butcher shop. So he was doing different things there to try and still attract those customers in. Um, so I guess he had a, the same challenges as as the metropolitan um, butcher shops did where the, the supermarkets, would, supermarkets were taking a big sh- chunk of, um, of what the retail butcher shops were doing. So, you know, he had to do different things to try and attract them back in. When your father works from dawn to dusk, there's only one way to be sure of seeing him. Go to work as well. While Brendan was growing up, he got a sense of his dad's skills, smarts and creativity. He also learnt to make rissoles. Having a dad that's got his own butcher shop, uh, it was, you know, we didn't see him all that much because he's working really long hours. Obviously, it's one of those trades that you're a retail outlet as well as a tradesman, so he'd leave early in the morning uh, before we'd get up to, to start, you know, processing the, the 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 meat for the day, and then he'd have to be there until you know closed at six o'clock, and then then pack up. So we didn't see him all that much as kids during the week, and then he'd open on Saturdays as well. So we sort of took that chance to to go in and um, spend time with him. So every most Saturday mornings, I'd go in with Dad, and um, yeah, be there with him at the shop, and you know make rissoles and the best part about it was that you got morning tea you got to cook up for morning tea which was uh, a bit enticing to get out of bed early as a kid um so yeah growing up in the industry and and spending time with with dad who was who was um yeah a really hard worker and worked long hours in in a retail butcher shop was was a good grounding for for where we are today. I never thought that I'd, I'd um, get in. I'd be working with Dad. That's for sure. We had a we've we've always had a, a, an amazing relationship, but never never thought we'd be working together in the family business because it was a retail butcher shop, and um, yeah, it wasn't something that that I aspired to get into. I was living in in Melbourne and. Um, I was working in marketing and finance and I was studying my MBA and doing some of the study on the whole food movement and on farmers markets and and that type of thing. And dad was at home in back in Wangratta in the butcher shop and he was he was making his small goods as 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 well as his fresh meat. And um I started, you know, taking an interest in in this other stuff that he was doing and he, he said to me one day oh I've I've got an I've got a website I said oh I oh, do you he said yeah check it out so I jumped on and, and had a look and it was the most horrendous website you've ever seen I think he was um it was like he was selling motorbikes or something there was flames coming up on the screen it was taking forever to load and there was yeah it was just so um, far removed from what he was actually doing, I said, right, I will, I'll build you a new one. So that's sort of where it started. I built the new website for him and started to get interested in, in what he was doing and, um, the, you know, the farmer's market stuff. And it was coming up to Christmas and I was working in a financial institution and a couple of my colleagues that I was working with uh, were, wanted a nice Christmas ham. So I said, well, we make, dad makes nice Christmas hams. And so that sort of, the word spread around the office pretty quickly. And then um, from then, I think he had to do two trips to Melbourne with a with a, a truck full of hams to sell to the, the, um, the, in- the financial institution I was working at for Christmas. And then it sort of went from there where we got involved in the farmer's markets and started to pick up some retail customers around Melbourne. Uh, around that time, uh, me and my wife had our first child and we decided that we didn't want to live in Melbourne in the big city to raise our kids. We wanted to move back to the country closer to family. Uh, so we moved home and, yeah, that that was when I started working with Dad in the butcher shop and that was about 13 years ago now. And we grew from just a, a retail butcher shop supplying a couple of retail outlets in Melbourne um, to today where we supply around 450 retail outlets across Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland and South Australia. 
Brendan has always valued his relationship with his father and his father's canny ability to be ahead of trends. When Brendan came back from the city, both father and son appreciated the different skills they could each bring to the enterprise. Uh, Dad's obviously got the the expertise in, in and his experience in the industry and his, his recipes and his butchering ability. And, and I bring um, a business, uh, the business ability and the marketing and uh, the, the ability to, to grow the business outside of a retail butcher shop. So... He had a great following of retail customers, uh, but sort of Wangaratta is where it finished and um, working together and and we, we've been able to, you know, ha- have many, many more people be able to enjoy the products that uh, that we make and, and, yeah, stretch it all the way up the, the eastern seaboard and then across to South Australia as well, which has been really, you know, really pleasing and, and, and quite humbling to have so many people um, and in, enjoy and are uh, great uh, supporters of us. So Dad's always been, I've always said he's sort of one step ahead of, of the game a lot of the time. Like he was one of the first uh, butchers to start doing pre-made meals. He actually employed a chef to work at the, the butcher shop in Wangratta long before anyone else was was doing that type of thing. He was doing um, catering jobs as well from the butcher shop, and uh, he was doing a lot of things that that he was that you know he was sort of leading the charge with, and it was it was similar with the small goods. So he um, he had a customer come to him one day that had allergies to to the chemicals that were being used to in the traditionally made small goods, and asked Dad if he could you know create a product that didn't have these in, um, chemical ingredients in it. And most butchers would just say, oh, yeah, go away. This is how I do it. But dad being dad, he he took the challenge on and, and over many years and in con- consultation with some food scientists and uh, ingredients manufacturers, he created a, his own recipe that, uh, that eliminated the chemical ingredients. So that was a, a major player for that. And also with the, the animal welfare side of things, uh, he wanted to use uh, pigs that were free range and that were ethically farmed. So he teamed up with Glenn Jones, who was growing pigs in Yay, just down the road from Wangaratta near Mansfield. And they worked together again over many years to produce a pig that was ethically farmed and true free range that was going to be um, conducive for the small goods market, not the fresh meat market, which most of the the pigs are grown for, and 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 free range pigs are grown for. So, being free range, ethically farmed, and without any chemical ingredients, were a real um, selling point for when we started to grow and take the the product into retail outlets in Melbourne in a retail form, because that was they were just like, well, there's nothing like this out there bring it in, let's go. And yeah, we, we just, we went from strength to strength in these retail stores from there. Gamsey starts with whole free range animals and uses different parts of the carcass through the week. It's a holistic circle of small goods, beginning with a beast and finishing with a packaged product on a truck. So we do our processing from nose to tail. So we get whole pigs come in to us and we butcher them down and we make our small goods out of that. So we're not getting in a lot of um, pre-butchered box stuff um, and then just brining it and, and smoking it. We're getting um, true free-range pigs uh, and doing all the butchering and, and processing ourselves. So, for example, we'll get our delivery of pigs tomorrow and we'll work on them on a Wednesday. So our butchers will process them. Um, Mondays and Tuesdays, we're making sausages, making terrines, making other things like that. Um, we're smoking product every day. So we've got two big smokers and they're going every day and every night. And we're slicing product into into retail packs every day as well. So you'll see the whole, you know, circle of, of life, I guess, of small goods from the, the, the whole animal coming in to uh, product leaving us in retail packs into our truck to take down to 
to Melbourne to our out, retail outlets or might be going on a pallet to go to Sydney or to Brisbane um, or out in um, online orders out to private customers. Gamsey's range is founded on pork, but there's been a surprise success. Which product has confounded all predictions? So by far our bacon products are, are, are our biggest seller, but surprisingly a product which has taken off and sells really well for us is our turkey products. So we do a smoked turkey breast, which we only stumbled upon one year when we had in, we were in the butcher shop and we had some fresh turkey breast left over. That Christmas we'd ordered a few too many and we put them in the brine and did them the same as the ham came out, sliced them up, sent them out to our retailers and it went from there. Now, we sell just as much smoked turkey breast as we do ham these days, which is which is um, really surprising of since where it came from. Uh, we work with um, Daryl Deutsch's um, turkey farm in Dad's World's Bridge there and he said to us, one day, this is great, you guys are buying a lot of my free-range heritage-bred turkey breasts. I need to just do something with the uh, the, the the legs, the merry lands, the thighs. So we, we did a bit of experimentation and came up with turkey bacon. So traditionally, turkey bacon's a, a North American thing that's a product that's minced and then reformed to look like bacon, where we use the turkey thigh and it's got a nice layer of, of – Daryl produces a really good turkey that's got a nice layer of fat on there and um, we make it just like our um, streaky bacon and it slices up beautifully. So our turkey breast and our turkey bacon are two products that has really surprised us and they, they sell really well um, in our retail markets for us. Every Gamsey product is special, but there are some that are way out of the range of normal. What's the story with Gamsey Gold? Yeah, look, we're really excited about it, and it's it's something that that came up, Gamsey Gold. Um, you know, we're always experimenting uh, because we've got full control over what we do. Uh, we were experimenting with how good can we make make bacon, like if we had no restrictions on us about. You know the the price point we were we, our customers were prepared to pay about the processes, the time we were going to take. What would how would we make the bacon? So we we made Gamsey Gold, which is our which is a product that will we're going to release just before Father's Day, yeah, at the end of August. And what we've done is worked with uh, our pig grower in limestone pork to produce a free-range regeneratively farmed pig that's been finished on acorns and, acorns and macadamias for six weeks to give it a real depth of flavour and sort of along the lines of the, the Spanish jamón. Uh, these, these pigs uh, will have a really um, nice depth of flavour, so they're taking longer to produce and a bit of a different um, method with the, the feeding to finish them. We then decided we were going to use some ingredients in the brine that were, you know, the next level. So we, we're using Murray River pink salt in our brine, we're using a, a beautiful three bays mineral water um, as the base of the brine. We're using manuka honey as well as the sweetener in the brine. And we're smoking the bacon over retired red wine barrels. And we're doing it a cold smoking method. And we're doing it double smoked for about 16 to 18 hours all up. So this product is going to be a nice, clean product, but it's going to have some real depth of flavours from the different, um, from all the way from the way that the pig's finished to the way it's smoked over, um, cold smoked over the uh, retired wine barrels. So to, to make it really, um, really pop and to, to have it, you know, sit on stage, and uh, sit on, on shelf and present really well. We've, we've garnished it with, uh, with some edible gold leaf as well. So when you see it, the packaging looks like, um, like sort of a cross between a jewellery box and sort of a gold bar and the product will sit in there and it's been um, sprinkled and finished with some, uh, some edible gold leaf as well. From the, the, all the trials we've done, it's, uh, it's tasting absolutely amazing. The, 
The thing that I've noticed with it is um, when we're doing this cold smoking method, it's when we're then cooking it to eat, it's releasing a lot more um, aromatics and that you're getting a lot more depth of flavour from cooking it from a cold smoke. So when we're doing our um, normal bacon, we're getting that at, at the factory. So when we're cooking it, people come, when they're coming into the factory or they come past and, and they can smell it and notice it, not so much myself because I'm there every day, but you're getting that um, beautiful smell of the, the smoky smokiness and, and cooking at the same time where when we're cold smoking it, it's giving you that at home. So when you're cooking it, as I said, you're getting those aromatics and, and that flavour of of unlocking those um, that manuka honey and that that pink sea salt and the and the, the nice um, depth of flavour in the fat from the from the pork as well. So that's um, that's something that um, really surprised me and it's it's made it yeah it has made it worth it. Brendan Gamsey is enjoying the journey and energised to push ahead with the family business. What does he have to keep in mind when he's feeling a bit impatient? Bacon and ham and other products take a lot of time and just the the, the recipes and the um, manufacturing uh, methods that you need to 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 master to produce a, a consistently good product uh, is is quite difficult and especially if you're doing it your own way so if you're using your own brines if you're using your own smoking techniques if you're doing the butchering yourself, does take a lot of time and, and effort to put the processes in to have a pr- product that's of a really high quality consistently. So, you know, when you get the pig in until it goes out as a, as a finished product, takes two weeks, three weeks sometimes, depending on the product. So it's not a, something that turns around really quickly. Uh, so, yeah, I guess it's that process, perfecting that process on a consistent basis and, and producing a good product all the time that's, uh, that's the challenge in our industry. Food enterprises aren't easy, but they can be rewarding in all kinds of ways. Brendan shares his views on the biggest challenges and rewards. The same with probably any small business owners or food entrepreneurs um, told you that it doesn't happen overnight and it's it's really tough. Um, you go through your highs and lows and um, but look, if you're passionate about it and, and you can work with your family and great people, at the end of the day, it's, um, it's completely worth it. So, you know, starting off something that was, that was um, you know, unexpected for us, but it's just evolved naturally. Um, it does take a lot of time. You're not going to have success overnight uh, and, you, and it's not all going to happen without a heap of hard work and a heap of hours. So I guess the food industry is a great industry to be in. Um, it's really rewarding and um, it's, um, yeah, to, to be in a family business is fantastic as well. So if people have got the desire to do it, it it's 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 great um, and all the hard work pays off in the end. <laughs> I love that we are a strong business that um, has really good roots and and has that story and the um, the the history of of our family in it. So we're able to put something on on other people fam- other people's family tables that that's from ours. So we're producing a, a product that we're really passionate about that's, that's ethically farmed, that's, that's chemical free and it's going into other families' uh, homes and it's got our name on it and um, we're able to, to get all this out to not just our local area now but, but through a lot of the country which is, which is really rewarding and really exciting for us. Gamsey Small Goods are available around the country but they're firmly anchored in Wangaratta where the Gamsey family and their small team transform local pork and turkey into tasty smoked ham, bacon and sausages. In every mouthful, there's heritage, heartfelt care and plenty of hard work. This is The Producers, 
a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Danny Vallant. Stay tuned as we talk to some of Australia's best farmers, makers and growers. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or contact us via deepintheweeds.com.au. Thank you.